Hey everyone, Raphael Rau here with another quick tip and I heard a lot of you ask about the new metal material in Octane, uh, so I thought I'll go over that real quick. So um, I'm doing this in Cinema 4D but uh, it is very analog to what you can do in the standalone, in Octane standalone, so bear with me here and you will be able to do that in whatever application that is with the Octane 3.08. Alright, so uh, let's get started and as you know me, before I dive into the 3D and the actual things, let's do some slides first. So I prepared this, and you've probably seen this, these are Fresnel curves. So what you see here is the energy in the reflection based on the angle. So this is a zero degree angle here, so if you look at straight on a material you have almost no reflection in a dielectric material, and in decreasing angles you have almost 100% reflection. So I made those two spheres, uh, one with a white environment so you can see the effect better and one with an HDRI environment. It's one of Maxim Ross external HDRI packs, so you can download that if you want. Um, but I am not here for selling HDRI packs, I'm here for telling you what the difference is in metals uh, compared to dielectrics. So move over here and we have a metal curve. Now metals have a much stronger reflection as you can see here, but not only that, they can also have a reflection that is different for every wavelength of light. So in this case, uh, normally it's measured in R, G and B uh, because that's what our screen can show and our human vision is allowed to see. So in this case of gold, we have the strongest reflection in the red spectrum, then the medium reflection strength in the green spectrum, and the lowest reflection strength in the blue spectrum. So what we can get out of that is a golden color. What you also notice is the Fresnel curve also kicks in and takes it to 100% at the grazing angle, meaning that the gold will lose its reflection when viewed at the very grazing angle. And this is essential for metals. So let's jump back into our scene and see how we can do some gold material. Now first of all, of course, you have to go inside of the material and make it a metal material. And the second thing is, since we are tinkering around with the Fresnel curse, we are doing a lot of stuff in the index as well as in the specular. Now first of all, let's talk about the three modes that you have at your disposal. So artistic, IR plus color and RGB IOR. Now those can be described as from artistic to completely scientific. So the more you go down, the more scientific it becomes. Let's stick with artistic for a while. So with artistic, you have full control of the color and the brightness of the metal without setting any scientific values. So whenever I change something in here and it's in artistic mode, nothing will happen in here. And this is because you need to go into the specular and set your color here. So when I turn down the float value here, you can see that the metal is actually getting darker. And fun fact, if I put 0.04 in here, you get a dielectric. But that is not of concern for now, um, because you want to make metals, right? So let's make a gold metal. So for that, I'll go in here and then just set this to around 30 or 35, this around 20. Um, note here, most people saturate their gold too much so it becomes looking unnatural so be careful with the saturation in gold and uh, maybe that was a bit too red maybe let's go with 40 so you get your gold here so the thing how this is working is um, it takes a slicks approximation term that is somewhat of a simplified Fresnel curve and applies it to the color on one side and to white on the other side. And you can see that when I go in here and look at this at the very steep angle, you can see the gold loses its color as expected. 
So once you know the color of the metal you want to create, you have no problem of applying that to a simple artistic mode and it gives you close to physical um, correct results. So let's jump back to the material once more and go the next step. Now the next step is the IOR plus color mode. So if I tick that, it will only use the numbers in the first row. So what you can set here is the IOR and this is the N and the K value of the material. Now I need a bit of help of an internet site you may be familiar with and this is the refractiveindex.info. I've already set this to gold. What else you need to do is to select a line D. So this is the median of the visible wave banks, sort of. So at least um, for my research I've done, this is the value you'd go with if you want to um, make a material that is not colored or non-colored. And what this gives you for the gold is that N and K value. So you take those and put it in here. So that was 2.7979, I think it was. Let's see if I was right. Yeah, okay. So those are the magic values that produce that uh, lovely metal curve for you. If you go back, something like that here. So how does the color come in right now? So the color comes from the specular and only the color comes from the specular. So no matter what brightness you choose, it will always only choose the color from here and leave out the brightness to the curve you entered here. So this way it's a mix between artistic and the completely scientific model. So if you're not satisfied with the color, if you want to do copper or something like that, you can go more in the reddish one and take it there. And if the color is too bright for you or the reflection is too bright for copper for you, your taste, you can take down the reflection strength with the scientific values. All right, leaves us with the last thing, the RGB IOR. For the RGB IOR, now this turns red because I have entered some values here. So let's uh, reset those. For the RGB IOR, every one of those three columns here is used to determine the color. And on the Octane website, it is determined that they use uh, different wavelengths. Let's just go through how you do that. It's rather simple. So you have to keep those numbers in mind and those are rather easy. It's 0.65, so it's a wavelength of 650 nanometers. And then just copy and paste those numbers in the first column. And if I did that right, let's try one more time. Copy, right, paste. And then you go ahead and put in 0.55 and then copy and paste those numbers in the second row. As you can see, you can do a sorts of crazy effects here uh, if you want to, because the curves of course are mixed to the wavelength of the light. And then you have to go 35 and put those values in here. And now you have created a somewhat, I say somewhat because Octane uses eight bands of wavelength because it's a multi-spectral sampler and we only have three. But if you would have eight here, uh, it would be overkill. So the guys of Otoy made it simpler and put just RGB values in here. So if you go to another material, of course, you get different values. So if I go to aluminum or brass or something like that, it would show you different values. And if you put those values for 0 0.65, 0 0.45 and 0 0.55 in here, so 55 is the green spectrum, then you'd get the color of this metal. In this uh, case, it would be brass. So it would be rather similar to what gold looks like. 
So I guess that was all what I wanted to talk about to you right now. So um, just the artistic, the IOR plus color and the RGB plus IOR. A side note here, since the uh, 3.08 version, Octane also has different material models here. So this is the standard model that was always in Octane, but they also gained a Backman, a GGX and a Ward model. Now I use GGX a lot. Uh, because it models the reflections of the surfaces quite realistically. So let's real quick see what the difference is here. Now the difference comes mostly down to the roughness. So if I go in the, to the roughness and with the normal model, with the old model, set it to a value of 1, you can see that there's still some highlight there. That means it's not completely rough. Uh, also, what you can see if you go to the um, look at the material at a very steep angle, you can see it's still desaturated. Uh, those are both effects, both the roughness and the desaturation. It shouldn't be happening at a float value of 1 in the roughness. So let's go to our GGX model. You can see that both of those are not longer visible. So with a value of 1, you object actually should look diffuse as it is right now. And it shouldn't be desaturating on the edges, which it isn't. And that's a good thing. So um, whenever I do materials with a new Octane with the 3.08, I'll be sure to set this to mostly GGX, but uh, generally everything else than Octane. All right, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I might have been a bit rusty since I haven't done tutorials for such a long time. So I apologize for any inconvenience during the cut because I had to redo stuff a lot to bring you what I wanted to say to the screen. Hopefully that worked. And I say until the next time, goodbye.